Approximately eight months after the explosion of their game Last Day on Earth, Kafir released Grim Soul Survival as a hardcore version of that game. The devs of Grim Soul have shut down almost all cheating and have fixed all the exploits that you can get away with in Last Day on Earth. And they amped up the challenge to make it more difficult. But they did reduce the grind, making the game quite a bit more free to play. Today I'm going to share with you 121 tips and tricks for Grim Soul Survival. To give you a little bit of the backstory, you were infected with the plague and by the Emperor's edict you should have been killed but Sebastian Kerr the commander of one of the Emperor's orders secretly smuggled you out to save your life he sent brother Rupert to escort you to the Plaguelands but somehow he died and that is how the game begins you are alone and next to what remains of brother Rupert he actually has some really good stuff on his body like a good weapon the world map materials to build a Raven's cage but you don't need that just yet rather grab five pieces of wood build a club and then clear all the enemies in the area. This area is where you will be building your base so one of the first questions you need to ask yourself is whether or not you want to cut down the trees in your home area. Even though this is just about aesthetics, the reason I make a big deal about this is because once you cut down those trees, they will never grow back. So if you would like to design your base with trees on it, you need to use those trees. After killing everything in the area, I recommend building one pickaxe and then putting your character on auto. When he's done, you should be at least level 3 which will allow you to build a peasant's chest. Don't worry about building walls just yet because no one can actually raid your base. That hasn't actually been implemented in the game yet. After building a sack, I recommend using all of your resources on building storage. Place everything in that storage and leave the area. An attacked caravan event will appear. This event has over 50 slots worth of items, so you want to make sure that you go completely itemless and naked. Anytime I start a game, I look for something in the store that is between $5 to $10 as my way of supporting the developers of that game. If you like to do the same, I strongly recommend spending $6 on the On an Adventure package. This will let you start out with the equivalent of a military backpack, which you can't actually build in this game until you are a level 55. But buying one could obviously make the game more stressful because if you make one mistake, you will lose your entire purchase. If you buy the backpack, then you can get all the stuff from the event in two trips. Otherwise, it will take three. If you have to choose between items, these items are the most important to get early on in the game. The first thing you want to build with your loot is a raven's cage. If you grab the resources I highlighted, you should have enough to build it. The raven's cage will engage you in a long series of quests. These quests will give crafting points, which are needed to craft items. After this, you're going to be tempted to run to the various events that pop up. I would advise against going to those events just yet. Events give you great items, but they require a lot of energy, and they give you almost no experience towards leveling up. If you don't level up, then you can't build these workbenches, which are the key to advancing in the game. So instead of going to those events just yet, I recommend starting the process of building your base. This will involve gathering lots of wood and stone to build walls, which is the fastest way to level up, and you'll get lots of other items to build your workbenches. If you're at this point in the game, I recommend checking out my playlist that covers the best way to get each resource in the game, including the fastest way to level up. In my opinion, you are still playing at a beginner level until you build a sewing machine, which requires to be at least level 19. But if you follow the advice I give you and those videos you can easily get to level 19 in just a couple days. One thing you need to keep in mind is that when you're farming for resources at night, the night guest will appear. I love this edition of the game, it makes farming at night really suspenseful. Currently no weapon in the game can do damage to him, so the only way to deal with him is to scare him off. There are four ways of doing this. The first is to equip a torch. The second is to stand on one of these cryptic symbols, which will also scare him off. If you're in a zone, you can also survive by leaving the zone and waiting until daytime. And if you are home, you can go into your house. After you build your sewing machines, your base can properly function like a hub for everything else you do in the game, which makes it a lot easier to do events. Events in Grim Soul Survival have a wide range of difficulty. Some you can do right away, but others are a lot more difficult. The easiest one is the attacked caravan, which we talked about earlier, and it has amazing loot. But after you attend this event twice, it will stop showing up forever. The second easiest event is the broken cart event. This event has some decent loot that is pretty easy to attain, but every once in a while you'll end up having to fight a damn knight which makes the event a little bit harder than easy but it's still not that hard also this event is where you will eventually find and tame your horse but that is a very long process that I'll explain later on the next event is the night at the cemetery it only spawns at night and you have to be level 18 for this event to even show up but this event is the best way to get scrolls of control and really good weapons personally I recommend waiting until daytime before entering this event the event will still look gloomy as if it's night but the night guest 
guest won't appear, which will make it easier to do the event. The hardest event is the Treasure of the Damned. You have to be level 25 for this event to show up, but it's probably a good thing because this event requires two sets of gear and several weapons to complete. But once you complete it, it gives you some really great stuff, including stealth potions, which are extremely rare. And then the Wondering Merchants is also an event, but it doesn't include a challenge. Rather, it's simply three different merchants offering various traits. Here's a list of all the possible traits offered by the merchants. Shout out to Grim Soul Thailand for compiling this. Since they made this list, the devs added another trade where you can trade 10 chalices for one scroll of control. You can technically get up to nine events a day, but spawning events in Grim Soul is a little bit more complicated than it is in Last Day on Earth. The reset time is still midnight GMT, but only one event will appear at a time. And in addition to needing to get your energy below 60 for some events, Grim Soul rewards you with events based on actually playing the game. So make sure to spend some time in the zones you travel to before exiting the area. I recommend waiting to go to the surrounding AI bases until you get the quest for it in your Raven's Cage, but when you do, they have some great stuff. They have a lot of food and materials which makes it worth it. Now in order to fully raid all of the AI bases in the game, you need to access black powder so you can build bombs. The best way to get black powder is to farm for night caches. Night caches only appear when you enter a three skull zone during the night. They have incredible loot including the resources to build black powder and the map to unlock the gatekeeper location which is the first boss introduced to Grim Soul. Killing the gatekeeper and raiding his hut is not only a great place to get legendary loot like the flaming sword but it is the only place to get the key to enter the forsaken dungeon. Which if you're new to the game you might be like where the heck is the forsaken dungeon? Just like the gatekeeper map I just showed you, dungeons are revealed by finding their map in chests. And I assure you that you will find those maps well before you are actually ready to go to the dungeon. Once you are ready to go to the dungeon, I recommend checking out my video on the cheapest way to do the dungeon. The dungeon will cost you quite a bit of resources to complete, but it also has the best loot in the game. For example, the first level of the dungeon has scale armor, which can't even be crafted yet, a chance to get any of the legendary weapons, most items to complete your stables, but most importantly it has the the blueprints and materials to build your grindstone, which gives you better weapons, and the torture's chair, which is the key to unlocking dungeon level 2. Once you finish your torture's chair, you will be able to capture one of these forsaken hermits that you can find on the outskirts of a three skull zone. Torturing this hermit will unlock the second floor of the dungeon, which is the only place to get the last piece to finish your stables. Once you finish the stables, you will be able to tame a horse at the broken cart event, which is currently the ultimate goal to accomplish in the game. I have obviously not done this yet since that they just came out, but shortly after releasing this video, I will be doing the second floor of the dungeon live on Twitch. And if I get the bridle, then I will go finish my stable and tame my horse in that live stream. So I hope you guys come join me to do that. And my next video in this game will probably be a tutorial on how to get each and all of the items to finish your horse. In addition to those 96 tips and tricks, I have 25 more for you. Lumber burns 50% longer than wood, just like it does in Last Day on Earth, but I wouldn't recommend trying to maximize this at first because your woodworking bitches are going to have trouble keeping up until you're around level 20. After that, I recommend using only lumber so you don't have to make as many wood runs. Eating too much will make you sick and need to throw up. This decreases your movement speed by 60% and it can put you in a bind if you're fighting, so don't pop too many berries in the middle of a fight. My favorite cheap healing source is the fried leek which heals around 30 over time. Their healing system is a little different and in my opinion amazing. This game has done a great job of creating a wider diversity of attacks and ranges of weapons. They've also done a good job of diversifying the hit points and armor numbers of the enemies you are facing. This means that some weapons are really good against some enemies but using them on other enemies can be wasteful. For example the cart thill is amazing against the damned but is wasted on lepers. Though one might argue that it's still good against lepers because their range allows you to kill them without taking damage. Sneak attack only does two times the damage which makes sense because the halberd has 81 attack and as a medieval fantasy game I imagine there will be even stronger melee weapons in the future. Mining limestone through graves is a fraction more efficient than farming ore deposits but honestly it's most efficient to farm whatever's in front of you. Level 1 walls are twice as expensive as they are in Last Day on Earth but level 2 walls are 33% less expensive. Level 3 walls are a bit more expensive than they used to be in Last Day on Earth but are way less expensive than 
they are now. In my opinion, their scaling system for walls is very well done. Iron, steel, meteoric ingots do not exist yet. Birch and oak do not exist yet. Hawberries have more uses than holly berries, so I try to eat more holly berries when I farm to even things out. Use your resources to build your workbenches before putting resources towards your stable and wagon. One, because the wagon doesn't exist yet, but even the stables will take a very long time to build, and you need those workbenches. I recommend building two sewing machines before using any cords on your stables. Knights and Templars drop saltpeter, which is used for making black powder, and nails, which if you play Last Day on Earth, you might think this is lame, but this is in fact not lame. Nails in Grim Soul are far more expensive than they are in Last Day on Earth. Each set of nails requires one bronze ingot to make. Each bronze ingot requires a copper ingot and tin ore to be smelted together. And they added the simple bow and crossbow in the game and they're pretty fun. I don't really understand how the armor system works in relation to these items since they don't seem to follow the normal rules, but hopefully I'll figure that out soon. Well, that's it guys, hope that helps. I have videos covering every single aspect of this game and I try to be this informative in each of those videos. So if you have any questions about this game, just type your question in YouTube and add JCF at the end to make sure that it will be a short, informative video. Also, if you wanna watch live gameplay, be sure to follow me on Twitch. And if you don't have a Twitch account, you can also watch those live streams on this YouTube channel. All right guys, in the words of Sebastian Kerr, may the light decide your fate.